Well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to my Backyard Wednesday Walkabout and my YouTube channel, if you are new. Uh, Stuart is taking a break today, and I am just doing this walkabout solo. I have had someone here this morning help me with a number of different things, but primarily taking out some dead plants and refreshing all of the gravel because hallelujah, the temperature finally broke. Yesterday it was 105 and today I think the high is just maybe in the mid 80s, which is just unbelievable, really miraculous. And so I'm refreshing things, pulling out and cutting back dead stuff and the guys have, have helped me with some things. Oh, here's, for example, I had lots of bulbs out in my string lights and they helped me replace lots of the bulbs in anticipation of being able to be outside more. And yes, if you are appreciating as I am this wonderful cloud cover, then you know that I know that fall is indeed around, around the corner. So here's just kind of an, an overview and I've got lots of things that need to be done. I need to really give my whole dining area a good cleanse. I need to clean off the glass. I see that one of my chairs is breaking down, so I need to think about that. But the other thing I wanted to kind of show you is that it's been repositioned and it is about 24 inches closer to my house than it was before. And why? It's because finally I just decided to remove that huge, I mean massive, probably close to a 25 to 30 year old U that was anchoring this corner. And finally, I just decided it was on its last leg. It might still be alive, but it was gonna take a long time to recoup and look better. And now I like the fact that this is open. And that's, and, and it almost looks as good without it. And that's my thematic for this Wednesday walkabout is I just am removing some things and I am not replacing them or I am repositioning some things around them. So in this area, in this bed under the window box, which continues to look good, you can see that I've got a little bit of, of brick and stone and I'll just continue that over to the wrought iron railing that goes up the back porch and I may plant a little bit in there. I may not, I'm not sure what I'm going to do, but I will re-gravel it and make it look fresh. I think we may have run out of gravel by the time we got to that point. But because it was projecting and protruding so much onto the dining deck, I now have a lot more room and it doesn't feel so claustrophobic. So, that is, I guess, the silver lining behind a lot of the stuff that I'm doing in the backyard today, and that is I am taking out some dead plants. I am refreshing, but doing very little replacement at this point. I do have some things in the front yard in some pots that have died that I may or may not replace, but right now I am just enjoying the fact that the temperatures are cooler and I can be outside long enough to not just water, but also do some planning. And planning is what I am doing now that lots of things have been refreshed. And so let me come over here and I'll show you. I made a big run to Lowe's to get lots of gravel. And you might be able to see a little bit of a distinction between some of the new gravel that's been put down and the old gravel. And that's just because the old gravel has kind of aged a little bit in place. And the new gravel hasn't settled in yet. And I need to do some spread, a little bit more spreading around. But in the foreground over here, we cut back some perennials and we replenished the gravel and I'll do a little bit of my own tweaking, but that was that was a lot of heavy gravel to move. I think I bought 16 bags of gravel. So these guys spread it for me, and now I'll just do some tweaking. 
So for example, they put it in the foreground and then I'll spread it back a little bit more so that it blends in and harmonizes more with just the area in the back that's dirt. I took out in this blank spot right there, there used to be a round arborvita and there was another one at the other end of this section. And I, they just were both struggling. They were not dead, but I told, I, I told Victor, I said, just dig them out. You can take them to your home if you like, but I don't really need them from a design standpoint anymore. And that's just one more thing that I have to tend and try to make healthier recover. And I'm just not going to do that. And the border itself is none the worse for wear. So all I have to do is just kind of spread that gravel around. Hopefully, I think within the next week, we may even get some rain. We got a tiny bit last night. Now, this is the first time I've looked at the vantage point from this perspective with that U gone. So I might move the table just a little bit more to my right because it's my theory of garden relativity that every one thing in the garden is related to every other thing. And this is not a working Wednesday walkabout because I, I've been across this street with a neighbor whose husband is having some, some health difficulties. So I've been over there, so I was happy to have someone working here in my stead. And the other thing that I'm doing, do this now, if, if you're like me and it has finally cooled, I'm gonna start doing some aggressive feeding so that things can put on new growth, new foliage, new flowers, look refreshed, grow before fall hits. And then the other major thing that we did was we exposed the potage and we took down the tarp, but we did not disconnect it. So you can see over here, it's still connected. And then if we need to reattach it on the north end, I can, but I don't have to worry about that right now. The other thing is, is I wanted the potage in its entirety to really be able to adapt to being exposed because it's been in shade and it is supposed to it is supposed to be cloudy for the next several days. So this will help it adapt a little bit and if it looks in any way like it's gonna get really hot again and really crispy, then I will absolutely put it back in place. But I think this will, and, and I, I do think that some of the plants, not all of them maybe struggled a little bit to get pollinated so I might not have, it might have affected, in addition to the high temperatures, the fact that it was covered might have helped on the margins, um, some production in my tomatoes and things. I have not watered today. And so some of the things in pots are looking a little bit languid, but I will take care of them now that I'm back home. And this is all about a summer of survival rather than performance. And I am happy with the degree to which it has survived. And now I'll come in and hope that I can get a little bit more color, a few more vegetables, a few more tomatoes, a few more cut flowers out of what remains. And the other Sunshine Ligustrum has been cut back. Now I need to balance those out a little bit and do just a, just a little bit more pruning and assessing on some things. But I had them do the major scale work because I'm running, just kind of running out of time between wanting to get things done um, before it hopefully starts raining, but also before my son's wedding and some other obligations that I have. And I've learned to give myself permission when I need it. See right there, I've got some of those icicle eggplants ready to be harvested, but that pot is very dry. So I need to water. 
And even though it's just mostly green on green, as I've said a million times, it nevertheless is looking better and more well kept. And so now with some judicious feeding and tending and moving around of some gravel, I think that as a foundation and as a backdrop for fall and some fall plantings that I may do and pumpkinizing I may do, I think it'll be beautiful. I continue to be thrilled with my water barrel that I attached. And like I say, I've, I've still got a little, I've got a little bit of color and hopefully I'll get more as things, especially my dragon wing begonias and some coleus and, and my geraniums. The geraniums really have not done much this year because it just got too hot. But I'm gonna start feeding them a lot, clipping on them a little bit. We did some light pruning on some of the box topiaries in the pots, but I'm not doing any massive or aggressive pruning on the hedge in the back for a while till it adapts to being exposed again. And hopefully I will not have to put it back under cover, but I know how volatile conditions can be here. And we did, I did the same in the front. Um, I did some of it, they did some of it, and we remulched the front, cleaned up a bunch of dead leaves, and I think the overall effect is just that it doesn't look so wilted and fatigued and just laggard from the end of the summer and August. And right now, that's good enough for me because I can, I can come in and overlay some color supplementally as long as the backdrop looks good. So I can zhuzh it up a little bit as long as the bones are neat and tidy, and I think they are. So this is just a little walkabout late in the afternoon of what's going on. You'll notice that some pots are empty because some things have died and I've just pulled them out. And later when it's a little bit cooler, I'll be doing more, probably moving of shrubs around and stealing from Peter to pay Paul, but not, not just yet. So there is a Wednesday walkabout and update and a little bit of rejuvenation for the back. You guys have a wonderful afternoon and evening.